Hi there, thanks for joining us. Welcome back. Exodus chapter 16 is our Old Testament studies, which I will remind you is going right along with our Wednesday night New Testament studies in the book of Revelation. We've left Israel with the Red Sea behind them. The Egyptians' armies drowned, and they're journeying on through the wilderness. Now, chapter 16, they took their journey from Elam and all the congregation of the children of Israel, which came to the wilderness of sin, not to be confused with the act of sin, but this is a, a noun, not a verb, the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On si when they get to Sinai, Moses is going up to get the Ten Commandments up at the mountain. Remember on Mount Sinai? But they're halfway between there. It's on the 15th day of the second month after departing out of the land of Egypt. Sounds like uh, they're about six weeks into their journey. And the whole congregation of the is of children of Israel murmured. It's one of those onomatopoeia words. Uh, murmur, murmur, murmur. The whole congregation murmur, murmur, murmur. They were complaining. They were grumbling. Because why? They... Well, they've seen the miracles of God. They've seen what God did with the Egyptians, but uh, it don't take long. Here we are six weeks later, less than that, because that's six weeks ago they left Egypt. But a month later or so, here they are, they get hungry. So they just start to complain and whine and just act like us fallen human beings. They murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Verse 3, And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God... We had died. Would to God's old 1611 English for, I wish to God that we had just died in Egypt. Um, or like the kid that's holding his breath and says, I wish I was dead, right? <laughs> Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in Egypt. And when we set, because, boy, we had it good back in Egypt. Remember they're saying, well, we, we, we had uh, flesh pots and we did eat bread to the full. You've brought us out forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Now, for generations, they've been praying about how bad it was in Egypt, right? They're making us do all this work and build these Pharaoh cities and uh, dancing in the mud and making bricks with the straw in the mud. And uh, they ain't giving us a break and we ain't got enough to eat. And they're praying and they're crying for God to send a deliverer. God answers their prayers. First time they got a little opposition. We shed it so good back there. <laughs> then said the Lord to Moses, verse 4, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. God sometimes answers prayers in spite of ourselves and in miraculous ways that we could have never dreamed of. I'll rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove or test them whether they walk in my law or not. Now, we ain't got to Sinai yet, so he ain't get them the Ten Commandments. Uh, but he's going to give them one law, and they won't even keep it if we find out something. It'll come to pass that on the sixth day, here's the law. <laughs> It'll come to pass on the sixth day, which would have been Friday for them back in the Old Testament day. On the sixth day, they'll prepare that which they bring in, and it'll be twice as much as they gather daily. So here we see, even before the Ten Commandments is given, the, God's given them a Sabbath law to start with. He's going to have them rest on the seventh day. But he said, on the, on the sixth day, I'm going to give you twice as much so you don't have to gather it up on the seventh day. It ain't going to rain none on the seventh day. The bread's going to come from heaven from uh, Sunday through Friday. But Saturday ain't going to send none, so you get twice as much. But only do that on Friday. So you have some for the seven. And it ain't all that complicated, but they, they <laughs> here's people. When you're dealing with over a million slaves, you're going to have people just, uh, Moses was probably bald, right? <laughs> and Moses and Aaron said to the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning, then you'll see the glory of the Lord. For he that, for he... Let me try this again. For that he hears your murmurings. He hears your complaining. And Moses turns it around and says, you ain't complaining against us. He hears you complaining against him. Your complaining is against the Lord. And what, what are we that you murmur or grumble or complain against us? It's against God ultimately. 
And Moses said, this shall be when the Lord shall give you the evening flesh to eat. He's going to give them flesh and he's going to give them bread. We're going to find out the flesh is quail. He's going to give them the manna, which is a type of bread. Uh, reminds me when I was little. The grandpa and dad, they used to love uh, quail, gravy, and toast. That's what, they, what they're giving them here, quail and toast. And in the morning, bread to the full. For that the Lord hears your murmurings, which you murmur against him. And what are we? You're murmuring against him. Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. And Moses spake to Aaron, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. He's going to tell them that a bunch of times. God hears your complaining. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Here comes that glowing presence of God, the Shekinah glory in the cloud. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening you'll eat flesh, in the morning you'll be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Do you know that? Have you figured that out yet, that God's God and you're not? That's what he's got to teach these folks. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up. They covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay around about the host. Just They went out and those quail, quails were just fluttering around everywhere. I remember once when I was a kid, there's a big noise hit the living room window and uh, Dad looked out and a whole covey of quail had flown into the wind and they were just flopping around on the ground out there and he was out there gathering up uh, probably a couple nights suffer, suffer. They'd committed suicide, flew into the glass. And when the dew that was gone, behold, there upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, it is manna. Now, see, this is funny to me. It was, uh, this would make a good mo movie part where everybody would laugh. The children of Israel went out and they saw the manna all up on the ground. They didn't know what it was. God hadn't told them, you know, what it was yet. But uh, they've got to name it. Here's the bread from heaven. It's on the ground. So they all look at one another and they say manna. Now, you and I understand that differently. What manna literally means in the Hebrew is what is it? <laughs> so they're all looking at it and said, what is it? And they called it manna. It's the what is it? <laughs> so There's manna on the ground. For they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord's given you to eat. Now, I have to pull you out of the Old Testament to the new when we come over this point for a minute because Jesus took this very passage and applied it to himself. The, the Pharisees, the the Orthodox Jews of, of his day that prided themselves on their ancestral history, they, they bragged about how they were descendants of Abraham. And they said, our forefathers ate manna in the wilderness. <laughs> and Jesus said, yep, your forefathers ate manna in the wilderness. And by the way, your forefathers died. They're dead. They eat manna and they died. It was a temporary thing to keep them alive through the wilderness. All it was was food to keep them alive. But Jesus said, I am that bread of life that came down from heaven. And if a man have eaten me, he'll live forever. So Jesus was going back to this thing and saying, them people would have starved to death, right, if, if God hadn't have given them some kind of a, a supernatural miracle to keep them alive to travel through this wilderness land. For 40 years it's going to turn out to be. And God fed them that until they got to the promised land. Then they had to go to work and make a living like everybody else. But there wasn't nothing out there, so God fed them supernaturally. Manna, they called it. And it, it sustained them in this wilderness journey. But Jesus took that and he's basically saying, that manna was a type of me. That here we are in 2022, and we Christians from the day we've been saved to the day that we enter into the promised land of heaven, we're in between in this wilderness journey. And he, Jesus says, it's him who will sustain you on that journey. Whoever will partake of Jesus, he says, has eternal life. So he's our, he's our daily bread, too. We pray, give us our daily bread. That's in two ways. We need, we, need, we need a portion of Jesus every day, but we certainly need physical bread every day, too, to live down here. But as Job said, there's something more important than groceries. Job says, I have esteemed thy word more than my necessary bread. So chapter 
16, verse 15, they call it manna. Jesus drew on that and said he's, he's the bread of life, ultimately. 16, 16 is where we are in Exodus. This is the thing Moses is explaining to them. That's manna. It's the thing. It's the bread. It's the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, an omer for every man. You say, well, what's an omer? Hold that thought. I'm going to give you the answer at the end of this chapter, what an omer, because everybody says, what's an omer? What is an omer? Well, the Bible's got an answer. Hang on. <laughs> an omer for every man, according to the number of your persons. I guess if you've got five people, it has to get five omers. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents, according to the number of the people in their tent. And the children of Israel, verse 17, they did so and they gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it or measure it that with an omer, so we know an omer is a unit of measurement, right? He that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. There was just enough for everybody. Give us this day, or my God supply, will supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus is a New Testament verse. Uh, we want to read that sometimes, that my God will supply all our wants. He didn't say that. I'll supply all your needs. He's always supplied mine. Ain't you? You're still alive and you ain't starved to death. I'll take that as a yes. He had no lack, and they gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said in verse 19, Let no man leave of it till morning. Get what you need and eat it all up. Notwithstanding, oh, here we go. Here's these people that Moses is dealing with, pulling his hair out. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses. They wouldn't listen to him. Some of them would but some of them left of it until the morning. And they found out in the morning they got up, it had worms in it and it stank. <laughs> it bred worms and stank. And Moses was wroth or angry with them. He said, you all make me pull my hair out probably. <laughs> because they were saying, uh, he told them very plainly what God told them to tell him. And they didn't believe that preacher knew what he was talking about, so they're going to go out and do opposite anyway, right? But they found out that he didn't know what he was talking about. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. They learned, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. You eat what you do. And it came to pass, better get up early, right? Don't lay in that bed till noon, it'll be melted off. You better get out of that bed and go out and gather it. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation, they came and told Moses, and they said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath to the Lord. So we've got a Sabbath here, a Sabbath law even before we get to Sinai. Bake that which will you bake today, and seethe, or boil that which you will seethe, and that which remains over, lay up for you to be kept till morning. Because we ain't going to do no work tomorrow. We're gonna, it'll rot any day except for Friday night. You can keep it till the Sabbath that way. That's God's, that's God's plan, and do what God said to do is the lesson. And somebody probably reads and says, well, I know, I don't know. Uh, we kept it on Friday night, and it didn't rot. I'll try it again Sunday night. And they finally got up the next morning, and it'd be full of worms and stinking, right? You better do it God's way. God knows what he's talking about. So they laid it up to morning, verse 24. And as Moses bade... And it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, eat that today, for today's a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall find it not in the field. Six days shall you gather it. But on the seventh day, no work on the Sabbath, which is the Sabbath, in it there will be none. And it came to pass, verse 27, that there went out some of the people on the seventh day together and they found none. Some of them went out together on the seventh. Moses pulling his hair out again. I told you how to do this. And the Lord said to Moses, How long refuse you to keep my commandments and my laws? I just give you one, and some of them can't keep that one, right? See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Stay at home. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the Sabbath day. Some had to learn from just the word of God that was spoken through the preacher to them, but some had to go and learn in the school of hard knocks. That's still the way it is, ain't it? And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like, what does that stuff taste like? Well, the Bible's got, here's something right here for us. 
it was like coriander seed, little old seeds, white. And it tasted like wafers made with honey. That don't sound bad, was it? I'm, I'm thinking of an old graham cracker dipped in honey right now. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commands. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations. I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute. That they may see the bread whereof I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said to his brother Aaron, <coughs> that's an important verse right here. He told me Aaron said, now you take a pot and put an omer full of manna in it and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generation. And as the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. Now they haven't got to the place in, in the book yet where they it chronologically where God instructs them to build the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. But Moses is writing much later, and he puts it in here for us that they, they put it up in a pot and kept it for a while. And but eventually when they built the Ark of the Covenant, we find out else, other I believe it's Chronicles and again in the New Testament that they placed three items inside the Ark of the Covenant. One was the Ten Commandments themselves, written with the very finger of God on those rocks. And the other one was Aaron's rod that budded when they got to the bitter waters, Marah, I think it was called. And then the, the third thing here they, put in, they placed inside the Ark of the Covenant was a golden pot of manna. And that's what the Bible tells us was in there. And here's where it first started. Got Moses... Through God, God through Moses said to Aaron, go get a whole pot full of that stuff and save it. Eventually it goes in the Ark of the Covenant for a, a testimony to the future generations of how God has redeemed his people in the past, their daddies and granddaddies, pappies and, and so on. So, of course, I get take it that Aaron went out and said, if I'm going to get a pot full up for the Lord, I know where there's a gold pot, and that's the best one to give to the Lord. So verse 35, the children of Israel, they did eat manna for 40 years. It's only a couple of weeks or so if it went right straight to the promised land. But because of the rebellion, we're going to find out that God just keeps them doing laps in the wilderness for a long time till the next generation goes into the promised land. But they eat that manna for 40 years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. Now, I told you before we close, I'd tell you what an omer is. I'm going to read to you right out of the Bible, verse 36. Now, an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. <laughs> now, you know what an omer is. Seriously, both of them are just Hebrew units of measurement. Probably a certain little size basket was an omer, and an ephah was ten times as big. That's an omer. See you next week.